Well, welcome to today's Training well, Tuesday, everyone. Great to be back with you, and thanks for taking the time to come and learn with us. I'm Heidi Reese, and I'm the Training Programs Manager here at Dayton Superior. Just want to go over a couple of items before we really get started. Um, to let you know, these are being recorded, and they are always posted out on our YouTube channel as well as our website. Just search on Training Tuesday, and you can find them out there. See all of the webinars we've held in the past, as well as another link that you can sign up for the next one. In addition, I uh, wanted to let you know that everybody is muted so that we can all enjoy um, the learning experience without things in the background. So don't let that stop you from asking the questions. You can do so throughout the presentation or you can uh, wait till the end. We'll have a mini question and answer session. Do that through the Zoom chat functionality and I'll read those out for you and we'll get them answered. All right. So. Just to let you know, this training, um, this presentation is intended for training purposes only. Anything dealing with technical specifications or products that are mentioned within, please refer to DaytonSuperior.com and you can find technical data sheets, safety data sheets, among other important resources. So real quick, those of you on the phone who may not know who Dayton Superior is, or you know we are life forming. That's what you're here for, to, to listen to that Training Tuesday. But we're more than that. We are the leading provider of engineered solutions for the concrete construction industry. We handle accessories, chemicals, forming, engineering, and of course, training. Not only do we do these Training Tuesdays every week, it's a quick blurb on select topics, different every week, but we can also do more customized trainings for you, longer ones. We can come see you or we can do them virtually through Zoom. So please uh, go ahead and email us if you find that that would interest you. There'll be more information on that at the end. All right. So today's topic, we're going to talk about light forming, and it's an introduction version, and to help walk us through this is none other than our own National Training Manager, Chuck Hoke. Ta-da! <laughs> Chuck's sitting here beside me. He's been in the construction industry for over 48 years, with 20 of those as a dealer for accessories, forming, and chemical products. 29 of those have been with Dane Superior, and we are very lucky to have him, and he's worked not only as a product manager, but within many areas of the company, and now he is our national training manager. He is going to share his knowledge with us on light forming systems. So Chuck, take it away. Thank you, Heidi, and welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about light forming systems. What are they? What's the difference between a light forming and a medium to heavy duty forming? And what type of products do we carry that actually can accommodate any forming product system that you really need. So typically let's talk about concrete. Concrete is a flowable material made up of just mixed materials. Typically four main ingredients, which are sand, uh, aggregate, cement, and water are the base of it. Uh, typically you've got a bunch of other different uh, products added to the concrete, air entrainment, retarders, or, or uh, dense, actually, uh, poslins, uh, other materials that typically will get added at the ready mix facility. Uh, typically those materials help the product flow a little better, basically compress, come compact a little bit easier for the contractor, make it easier for him to work with. But concrete is typically still a liquid material, so it will flow as liquids do. Uh, everything that we talk about, concrete formwork, has to have a factor of safety. Uh, this can be known as factor of safety, safe working loads, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. The factor of factor of safety is typically the ultimate load divided by what the safe working load requirement is. So it's usually expressed as a ratio. Uh, concrete formwork, for example, has a safety factor of two to one. So that means if you have an ultimate load of 6,000 pounds, 
you're actually going to have a safe working load of 3,000 pounds. So that, take that 6,000 divided by two, and that's how we get the safe working load. And that all comes from ACI. ACI is kind of the uh, uh, head honcho on concrete and design and mixes, et cetera. Uh, fundamentals for concrete, they actually do a really good job in setting the bar in what we can do with concrete. So, job belt forms, typically referred to as sticks and boards, and we have an earlier training Tuesday on just this. Uh, primarily uses Dayton products such as snap ties, tie wedges, John system. Uh, and these typically are forms that are built on site with standard loose boards and loose uh, two by four, two by material, either two by fours or two by sixes. Uh, typically, uh, this is a uh, what they what they primarily call a light duty forming system. So, uh, when we're talking about this, we're looking at plywood. You have a two by four stud and whale system here. Some systems can only use a uh, stud or a way, a single whaler and not a stud and a whale in conjunction with each other, but typically then has a tie involved in it. The tie can be used either has cones or washers, and typically there's two different grades. We have a standard duty at 2,245 pounds and a heavy duty at 3,350 pounds. Uh, both these ties typically are one of the original ties in the marketplace. They've started being showing up around somewhere around 1919 and realistically have only had a few minor changes since then. The one, pro the one problem we have with ties, job built wood forms, is they are very labor intensive. So you see here in the drawing on the left hand side, you have your plywood sheeting. Concrete goes poured into the form. The concrete sheeting is then put, put under pressure from that concrete bearing against it. That plywood sheeting is then going to uh, transfer the load to the stud or whaler. The stud or whaler is then going to transfer the load to either a whaler or strong bag, depending on what, what type of system you use. And then that is tie is going to go to the tie wedge at the end of the tie, and then the load is going to be transmitted back through to the tie. Problem is you have to have the same amount of form work on both sides of the form, so it's very labor intensive. And on the right hand side, uh, the system here is basically a whaler and strong back system. Uh, difference between the two systems, contractor preference, whichever one they prefer to go with. And obviously direction of plywood. Uh, with these systems, they're going to use stamp ties, uh, either with a single whaler system or a strong back and whaler system like we showed earlier, or a whaler and, and uh, strong back system. Ties can have cones on it or they have washers. Uh, you can have basically a couple of different ties. You can have a short end or a long end. If you're only using a single whaler system, uh, typically you're going to need a short end, which is basically made up of a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, a two by four, which is only three and a half inches in width, plus a half inch for the wedge to take up. So giving us a four and three-quarter end. That's how we denote a short end snap tie. If we're going to use a whaler and strong back or a stud and whaler system, we're gonna add all those dimensions back in, plus another two by four, which is still another three and a half inches, and then get a eight and three, eight and a quarter inch end, thus a long end snap tie. Always remember you have to have a half inch on the end of your forming 
for that wedge to take up to tighten up. And that wedge will basically tighten up everything from about a quarter inch to, uh, I'm going to say close to five eighths of an inch. That wedge, being the Omni wedge, is a heat treated uh, carbon, high, high carbon steel product. Typically has a safe working load of about 3,350 pounds. So it is, it'll accommodate and work with the heavy duty snap tie. And you can also use the same wedge with a standard duty snap tie. At Dayton Superior, we like to pride ourselves on our quality of our product here. Our wedge here typically has rounded edges on the top on the slot there, which basically does not allow the steel to cut into the tie when you actually tighten it up. It basically still rides on that washer uh, head on it, on the tie. The John system typically is a single waiver system. Uh, this is a system that uses a what we call a John A clamp or C clamp. Here we're showing an A clamp. Uh, uses a single wagger. Typically, these walls are typically seven foot or less in height. It is used as a standard duty, so 2,250 pounds, safe working load, which basically means you're going to pour concrete at about three foot an hour. Uh, and as we talked about in the other classes uh, last week, the vertical rise of concrete is uh, how you actually figure the concrete form pressure on the form. When you're using the John system, people will actually stack drill all their plywood, and this can go for any of the stamp tie systems. Uh, once again, have to stack drill their plywood. Now, usually, a 5 8 inch drill bit will actually suffice. It'll cover basically the washer or the cone will actually cover the hole so you don't have to worry about water seeping through, but it'll allow the head of the stamp tie to be passed through. Uh, typically, you're going to see half inch, or excuse me, 5 eighths or 3 quarter inch plywood being used for your dimensional lumber. Uh, and you will have uh, of an eccentric to take up, which is similar to a tie wedge, but only it's mounted to the John A bracket and the C bracket in the form of a semi-circular wedge. Uh, outside corners typically have to be joined together. Uh, a lot of times they can use the John corner lock bracket. A lot of times what guys will do is they will use a uh, overlap feature where they will just run the two by fours over the top of each other and then lock the two in with another board on the opposite corner from the uh, form that you're using or they'll drop a 16 penny nail into the center of the ply into the center of the two by fours where they overlap to actually uh, lock them in place Strong backs typically are put roughly every eight foot on center. Uh, a lot of times what you'll see with this is when we're using a uh, John A bracket. Uh, you will actually have to put a strong back every eight foot, so therefore you'll need a John C bracket for the position of where those strong backs are located. Now you can do this with regular snap ties, regular short end snap ties and long end snap ties. Uh, but typically this is done so that it accommodates and will allow you to actually have taller pores than the eight foot high. Uh, now let's talk about modular forming. Modular forming was the second grade of uh, forming that we, we started with here. Uh, we're going to talk about steel ply. Steel ply is the most universally known product uh, in concrete formwork. It is a designed handset system. So it's designed to be completely assembled and disassembled by hand, or you can gang form it. Typically, you've got panels that are 24 inches wide, fillers uh, from basically 4 inches to 22, 
and they actually have a five inch in there just because we wanted to throw things off. Uh, the other one, uh, the other items that we have, we have steel fillers, which are one inch, inch and a half, and two inch in width. Uh, these are basically designed so that you don't really need to have any tape measures, uh, nails, hammers, et cetera, on site to actually assemble this system. Uh, we also have a 30 inch wide adjustable column form. Uh, but typical standard heights are three, four, five, uh, six, and eight foot. Uh, nine and 10 were added about uh, 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago to the system uh, to accommodate those, per, those homes that wanted to have uh, taller basements so they could actually make the rooms in the basement usable uh, with uh, ductwork and everything running overhead and the ceilings would still be eight foot high. Uh, you can get a two foot or seven foot form and they are purchase only and they are made to order. The steel ply system typically uses a standard uh, array of products. Uh, there's about eight or nine different products that they use on every job. One of those being the wedge bolt. The wedge bolt basically is a single component piece that actually slides in across the form to marry the two forms together. And you drop a vertical wedge into the wedge bolt to tie everything together. Now this holds the form together, but it also will hold the tie in place also. And typically they're spaced on your forms about every two foot uh in in location what wherever you have a tie obviously you've got to have a wedge bolt so t typically that's where you're going to make sure you're going to put those wedge bolts uh the one piece whaler clamps not a structural item it is basically there for one purpose it basically is used for alignment of the top of the form so when your form is put in place here you're going to look down the straight line and it's going to be a little rickety. Drop a two by four into this one piece whaler clamp. And as you can see, the two by fours go on top of the whaler clamp. And what it is, is once you tighten it up, that line becomes nice and straight. You have a turnbuckle that can be used for vertical alignment only. It is not designed for bracing, but it is for alignment purposes, for basically plumbing your form. Typically nailed to the two by four or two by six lumber can also be attached on the other end directly right to your formwork. Ties. Uh, two main types of ties for steel ply. Steel ply uses a X flat tie and a round tie, a flat or a loop tie. Uh, the S panel tie has a one inch break back standard. Uh, this also gives it the ability to be used on like commercial work, uh, DOT work, et cetera, because you can also get uh, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, and two inch break backs if need be on, these, on those ties. The flat tie is typically used only for residential work, and the flat tie, and the reason why is you only have a quarter inch break back. In other words, when you break the tie back inside the wall, it breaks a quarter of an inch away from the surface of the concrete. So all in all, you can actually take your fingernail and scratch that tie when it's broken back in the wall. The s panel tie obviously gives you the one inch or bigger break backs if needed. Uh, we've got ties that go S base ties, which will be able to attach to the bottom of the form if need be, if you're laying your forms down. We've got some toggle ties, adjustable ties, and bent ties. Uh, bent ties are probably one of the uh, biggest uh, nightmares that we have on job sites because you typically only need a few of them, and a lot of times they're not replaceable. You can't work your way out of having a bent tie. So always pay close attention to your details, especially around your corners and wall intersections. Uh, if the bent tie is required, make sure you give yourself additional time to order those up to have them made to order. 
but the S panel tie typically comes in 6,000 ultimate and uh, 4,500 pound ultimate, which actually works out to 2,250 and 3,000 pound ties, uh, safe working load. The flat ties come in a 6,000 pound and a 7,000 pound tie. And in safe, with safe working load, it is a 3,000 pound and 3,500 pound tie. Uh, most guys will actually end up using just a standard duty flat tie, uh, kind of the 7,000 pound is kind of, you can't pour concrete fast enough in the system to maximize the capacity on the 7,000. So the 6,000 pound is actually the most common flat tie that we carry. Now, we also have A110 metal rib. Uh, for those projects that require uh, large pours where you're going to actually segmentalize uh, pour slabs, uh, large foundation plants, you'll see where they'll actually come and use metal rib. Uh, this product is a great product because it enables you to put a bulkhead within the forming, within the wall form. And what it does is it allows the concrete to flow through just enough so that when it cures out, you have a very good rough surface to bond to. It increases the bond area of concrete considerably with, uh, with this product here. And there is a multitude of different uh, uh, arrays you can go with this system. You're looking at, usually this is used not for wall forming, but you see this product used primarily for foundation and uh, column forming and footers, et cetera. This is a great product for that. Typically you're looking at anything with a three to four foot lift product where you can raise your concrete in three to four foot lifts. Uh, relatively, you're gonna go a little bit slow with this system here. Uh, it does meet an ASTM A653 and an C847. Uh, you are looking at uh, uh, each sheet typically is approximately 18 square feet, and there are steel reinforcement ribs every uh, six to nine inches. The rib material is, is designed it actually, because of the way the ribs are running on top of this, and you're going to actually have it supported, and it's not really going to be supporting a lot of concrete form pressure. It's designed to support, you know, three to four feet. So you're only talking anywhere from 450 to 600 square feet per uh, concrete lift. And those lifts are going to be actually a lot slower than you pour concrete against concrete form work. So here you're looking at with steel stakes at roughly 12 inches on center, uh, you're talking of minimal deflection uh, within the system uh, when you have the full load based on it. Uh, if you're spaced at 18 inches and 24 inches, uh, obviously the farther you space your reinforcement to charge your anchoring points, which will be the uh, steel stakes, you are looking at uh, a change in uh, deflection within that product line. As you can see, for one-sided wall forming, it is a great product where you won't be able to strip the forms from the back. You can actually use the stay form to actually uh, allow you to pour the concrete on the back side, then what you do is just backfill against it or come back and pour a second pour up against it. Uh, here, you can see the stakes are put in. Uh, here, they seem to be a little bit far out, but we're typically looking at here maybe two to three feet. And the reinforcement coming back. So a lot of times what guys will do is they will put a kicker on top of that uh, to actually help hold that in a vertical position. Uh, to help accommodate the tying of that system, we are looking at the A46 snap tie uh, with a loop and, a, and a, a plate that goes around so you can actually feed your steel stake down through. This can actually be 
uh, the other end on the A46 can be adapted to match up to uh, a panel tie, a panel steel ply, or it can go to a snap tie end. Here we have, then we have combination ties. A lot of guys don't typically like the combination ties, but a lot of times you can't get ties long enough to accommodate. So they can use a, a, a B8, an A3B1 combination tie. They can also use an A46 combination tie. Uh, when you have bigger foundations, et cetera, this works out really well with it, uh, especially when you're using the B6R hook. Uh, which can wrap around coil rod to help anchor off, tie off to, et cetera. And along with the coil rod that will actually uh, activate from, will go from that combination tie to the rebar hook. Now, with that system, it's all listed in our Dayton Superior Handbook under Concrete Forming Accessories. Uh, but you'll find all of the pro all these products and everything listed on our webpage, uh, application guides. You got handbooks, technical safety data sheets, all available on site. Uh, brochures, success stories, and sales flyers are also available. A uh, couple of nice things that's in the in the website is who to contact, maps. Who's your salesman in the area? Uh, whether it be a Simon sales rep or a Dayton sales rep, uh, you feel free to look up that. You have both, uh, both those maps are listed independently, so you can actually look them up. And if you do need additional requiring or do have questions, please feel free to hit the chat button now to, to talk about it, or feel free to contact DaytonSuperior.com. Uh, uh, for additional training, or you can email Chuck or my Chuck. <laughs> Chuck and yourself. <laughs> I can email Heidi or myself, Chuck Coke at training at Dayton Superior dot com. Uh, if you want to scan the uh, QR code over here, that will take you right to the Dayton Superior training uh, site, and feel free to uh, use that at any time. So should I say thanks, Heidi, for the presentation? Just kidding. Thanks, <laughs> no, seriously, thank you, Chuck. So I'm going to talk to you real quick about what's going down for this month, Superior Deal of the Month. We've got a special pricing on that A110 metal rib that Chuck talked about, which is the stay-in-place formwork for concrete that gives you the ability to bond better, and it's only for June. So contact your sales representative for details and pricing, and you can order that and get a great deal. So with that, go ahead and put in any questions that you may have. You can do that through the chat functionality um, in Zoom. And uh, to remind you again, we record these every week and we post them to our YouTube channel. They are also out on our DaytonSuperior.com and they're um, organized by precast or by forming or by you know accessories and chemicals so that they're easily able to get to what you need. Um, are there any questions? Thank you, Brian. I appreciate you telling us to have a great day. You have a great day as well. And if there's no other questions, I want to thank everyone for participating in our webinar today. And don't forget to sign up for the next one next Tuesday. We're going to be doing Tower Max with our product manager, Ryan Graham. It's a new product, so you know, sign up for that. It should be really fun. And with that, thank you, Chuck. Appreciate you uh, coming out and teaching us again. Thank you, Heidi. And remember, all y'all will have a superior day. Oh, yes. Bye-bye now.